What's up, rockers? Well, guess what? Things are finally starting to open up again, which means convention season and live events are back. Now, for me personally, I want to make sure I can bring some of my goodies with me for people to see when I see them either at a convention or at an event. So my thought was I should make a clear controller so everyone can see all the mods that are inside. I mean, me personally, what the mods do is awesome, and obviously that's the point, but hey, seeing what's inside is half the battle. Now, for this, I'm thinking I'm just going to use a GameCube controller, because that's what the majority of the mods I've made are for. However, I didn't want to just use a plain, clear GameCube controller, because, well, it's clear, but it's not, like, super, super clear. I mean, the whole idea was to see inside and, you know, kind of see what's going on. So, I wanted to try something a little bit different. This is actually an idea I got from your boy Mikey over on Twitter, and he posted some pictures of him doing some basically vapor polishing, and this ended up creating a really nice smooth controller shell that was a lot more transparent than you would otherwise get. Short of doing some sanding and polishing and things like that, but nah man, we don't even got time for that. So anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I went about vapor polishing this controller, and how you can do it yourself fairly easily, as well as build out that controller that I'm hoping to take with me to conventions, and allow people to check out all the goodies inside. So let's roll that intro, and let's get into it. Okay, so before we kick this off, I kind of want to explain exactly how this works. You see, we're going to use some of this acetone, and acetone's a pretty aggressive solvent that breaks down plastic very, very quickly when plastic is placed into it. So just to show a little bit of an example, I'm going to crack this bottle of acetone open. We're going to pour it into that glass, um, which is actually made of glass. You can't use a plastic cup for this. And we're going to put that third-party orange... Um, Z in there, Z trigger from GameCube controller. And the point of doing this is really just to show you how aggressive the acetone is. So let's go ahead and put that in. And what the acetone is going to do is it's basically going to just completely break this thing down and pretty much turn it into some pretty gooey plastic. And we're going to go ahead and speed this up and then I'll pull it out to show you guys what it looks like. All right, we're about two minutes later and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this thing. Now, already the acetone is pretty cloudy in there. And I'm guaranteeing this part's, yeah, the part's like really soft. I can just feel it already. Um, yeah, and you can see it's like already starting to deform. And the color's slightly changing. Um, yeah, very soft, very sticky. I mean, you can see that, look at this. Yeah, it's gross. It's, it's pretty gross, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, you can clearly see that this is far too aggressive of a way to do this. So even if we were going to sit there and try to like paint this onto the controller um, to to polish it, it clearly wouldn't work. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna use the vapor from the con from the acetone to go ahead and kinda do a similar process but do it at a much sl slower rate. So let's kinda go ahead into the setup and I'll show you exactly what I did. So to make sure this thing's gonna work and kinda get it all set up, I visited Home Goods and I picked this nice little, you know, pot up for, I don't know, 20 bucks, which, you know, I suppose I could have just gotten something from Mrs. Rocker, but, uh, you know, last time I took something from Mrs. Rocker, let's just say things didn't go so well. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, the card in the upper right-hand corner will explain it. But anyway, my thought and my concern with this is I'm going to get a little bit of leakage of the acetone vapor. So what I'm going to do is seal up this edging over here. And to do that, I'm going to use some caulk. And I've just got this like very basic caulk that I've got left over from a home project. It's a fast dry latex caulk plus silicone. I mean, I think silicone caulk would be completely ideal for this, but we'll try a little bit of this and let's see if it works. So one other thing I did was I just sealed up all these bolts over here too. I have no idea if all the sealing is necessary, but I figure we want all of that nice acetone vapor to stay in there. All right, with that setup made, I just want to briefly talk about GameCube controller shells. And most controller shells really have a marking in them that'll tell you what kind of plastic they're made of. In this case, it's clearly labeled that it's ABS plastic. 
When looking at one of the even older ones, you can actually even see a manufacturer date on there, which is pretty cool. This one was made in 2001 and hey, it's made of ABS plastic. But for this one, like I said, I want to go with clear, so I think I'm going to end up going with one of these third-party clear controller chaos controllers. They don't have any like identifying markings similar to the official GameCube controllers, but I'm almost positive these are made of ABS plastic. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of prep, and to do so, I'm going to get the acetone opened up, and we're going to place it into that pot. Now, I did cut out a piece of paper towel, and I just cut it out in the general shape of the bottom of the pot. And what I'm going to do is just dump a little bit on there. I'm wearing some vinyl gloves, and honestly, don't wear vinyl. Get get nitrile. These ones kind of melt with the acetone. Uh, it breaks it down. It's a solvent, so you just want to be careful. So when I do this step here, my gloves are actually going to break down. So definitely make sure uh, you're using nitrile. But nonetheless, we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, we're just about ready to the point where we're going to put the controller in. The one thing we need to do first is create some standoffs. And to create those standoffs, I'm just going to use some paper clips and kind of manipulate them into a shape that'll allow me to prop the controller up. So you can kind of see the shapes I've made here and I'll go ahead and bend one. It's, you know, very, very simple to create these standoffs. These end up working pretty well because of all the grooves and screw posts and all those other things in the shells that we can actually just place them into and it'll hold everything and just prop it up just above that uh, paper towel. Like I said, we don't want any of the plastic to actually touch any of the acetone or anything that's been touched by acetone. So this allows it to just be propped up and it allows the vapor to evaporate from the acetone and start that vapor polishing process. Now I think the following goes without saying, but realistically that evaporation process happens at different rates based on varying factors. And the most notable factor is probably heat. Now for me, I'm doing this in my basement, which has an ambient temperature of approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I left these in here for about an hour and you can kind of see the time lapse here. Um, just showing kind of the, the process. Now, when I pull these out, it's important to note that the full vapor polishing process isn't complete. And actually, as the plastic rehardens, that's when you're going to see the biggest difference and when the majority of the polishing takes place. So anyway, I'm just going to pull these out and let them sit on some paper towel. And I'm going to leave these here to sit overnight. Now, I don't know that you necessarily need to wait that long, but that's how long I let it wait, and uh, I'm going to do my best just to touch the edges here, just so I don't put any fingerprints or anything like that into the plastic. Um, it is a little bit soft at this point still, so I definitely don't want to touch it and, you know, like I said, make smudges or marks or anything like that. So being very careful just to touch the sides. All right, so here we are next day. I just kind of let all these settle up, and you can already see there's a huge difference in, in clarity on the shell. Here's one that isn't um, been vapor cured, and you can already see there's a massive difference there. You can see my finger very clearly through that bottom one, so I think that worked pretty well. Uh, interestingly, too, like just kind of like looking at this, there's almost like a little, I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the camera, there's almost like a little gold tint kind of look into it. I don't know, looks pretty cool. Um, certainly wasn't intended, but um, looks like the shells are going to fit together no problem, so yeah, I think uh, I think this worked pretty well. So as I previously mentioned, this is kind of going to be a showcase to be able to show off some of the different mods that I've done over time, and we're going to start with the LED rings. Now, I haven't had these in stock in my store in a while, but uh, I'm working on making some more kits, and uh, yeah, here we are just getting this one installed. For those of you who might not know, basically what this does is it allows you to light up your thumbsticks, and you can control the on-off functionality through a touch sensor. It's pretty cool. But uh, if you want to see more about any of these mods I'm about to talk about, make sure you guys check out the cards in the upper right-hand corner, and I'll leave a link to each one there. Next, we're gonna install a Shine Wave, and of course, the Shine Wave kit is a reactive LED mod. And for me, I'm gonna go ahead and use Young Link, cause hey, that's who I main most of the time. Once this QSB is installed for the Shine Wave, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to a No Reset Snapback mod, and of course, get the rest of the Shine Wave kit installed. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just montage through the rest of this and just show a couple clips here, but like I said, if you wanna see a full installation on any of these or more functionality and how they work, like I said, check out that card in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, and with all that work finally done, it's time to put this controller back together. I'm going to put some lovely purple buttons on there and matching sticks and admire our work. 
I will say that this vapor polishing makes a really big difference in terms of overall clarity of the controller. I think it made a pretty dramatic difference and I'm really, really happy with the result. You can clearly see into the controller, you can clearly see all of the boards and mods and everything else and I'm just really, really, really happy with the way it ended up turning out. Now speaking of conventions, Video Game Summit 2021 is in the Chicago area on July 17th, that's this Saturday. So I'm planning to make an appearance there from 10 to 2, so if you want to check out this controller or some other goodies I've got, make sure you come swing by, say hi, and I'll hopefully see you guys there. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this one here at the end because I'm sure you're going to enjoy it too. Anyway, I'll catch you guys for the next one here soon.